Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're going to be talking about making and modifying special tools. So this has happened to almost anyone that's either worked on cars or really worked on just about anything. And that's, you need a special tool and you just don't have it. So what do you do? We don't want to spend the big bucks to get the factory specific tool. Maybe we can't even get the factory tool. Or simply we just aren't in a place where we can do anything and we got to do what we got to do with the tools we have. So today we're going to talk about some of my favorite tools I've either modified or simply just made. First we're going to talk about one of my favorite tools and it was almost perfect from the factory but I made one slight change that helped me on Volkswagen specifically and that's changing my power probe. You can see here that I've bent the tip on the power probe just a little bit. This is the power probe too. This is actually one of the older models. And from the factory, this tip is straight. And that's great because you can just get right on fuses or you know test components. But what I did was I put a small bend in it. I just took the, took the tip off, this unscrews, took the tip off, heated it up a very, very little bit, and then bent the tip. And the reason I did that was specifically for working on Volkswagens. So there's several Volkswagen models that have the fuse panel right behind where the cluster is. And having something like this that's this long is a little bit tricky to get on the fuses. You can do it, but you have to have the door swung all the way open. With this bent tip, I could get in there a lot closer to the car and not have to have the door all the way open and check the fuses as I go. And this was great for cars like the Mark IV Golf Beetle Jetta, the B5, the B6 Passat, and specifically, which I think is when I bent this power probe tip, is on the Torag. Now that they've moved the fuse panels underneath the dash a little bit, this bent tip is actually not quite as effective as it was on the older generation. But when I did that, that was the generation that was out. And luckily, I have a spare end for that power probe, so I can just swap them in and out if at any point I need to. Another really common thing that I've modified over the years has been sockets. I got two sockets right here. This is a 24 millimeter socket. And if you look at it right here, you can see that I've ground down the end of it. Not only have I ground down this end of it, but I actually cut this to make it a shallower socket. Now this was actually supposed to be a special Volkswagen tool 24 millimeter socket. It's for the diesel Torag, the V6 diesel Torag. There's a sensor underneath the intake manifold, the oil pressure sensor of some sort, that did require a special tool. But I couldn't find the tool that I needed in the tool cabinet in order to take the socket out. So it was an exercise of shortening the socket, it was an exercise of grinding down this end of it so that it would fit perfectly in the area where the sensor needed to come out and then have enough room that I could back the sensor out or whatever switch it was and still clear the bar that was right over the top of it. I may have spent 20 minutes messing around trying to get that socket right, but it saved me about an hour or so of having to take off the intake manifold, which was then opening up the fuel system and doing a bunch of other work that I didn't really want to do. Sure, it would have been great to find the factory tool in order to take that out, but we didn't have it. I had to do what I had to do in order to get that switch out. And notice I didn't use the most high dollar socket that I owned. I used a still a good quality socket, but I surely didn't want to grind down and cut up a uh, $40 socket. This is one of the other sockets that I've made. This is a 14 millimeter socket. It's on a quarter inch drive. And as you can see, I cut a channel out of the center here. And those of you that have seen an oxygen sensor socket will notice that this looks very similar. And the reason I did this was to remove an EGT sensor out of a common rail TDI. Now this was another one of those where Volkswagen apparently has a special tool for it. We either didn't have the tool at the time or someone had procured it for themselves. I don't really know, I don't really remember. It doesn't really matter, but I was able to just cut one channel out of it and I actually used my oxygen sensor socket that's very similar to this as a guide so I knew kind of what I needed to do and how to cut it. And the reason that I needed to cut this was the sensor that this had to go over has a wire on it. So the wire has to have a place to come out of the sensor and then out of the socket in order for me to break it loose and twist it out. The ironic part about me making that socket is that one, I've never had to use it ever again, which is just fine with me. I remember that being a real pain in the butt, even with a custom socket. But the best part of the story is that wasn't even the right sensor. This was back when Volkswagen did a very poor job 
of labeling all the e sensors for the exhaust on the common rails. This must have been, you know, mid-09 or so when those engines first came out. So there were no information about which sensor was which and uh, I ended up replacing the wrong sensor. But the great thing is I got a custom socket out of it. Next up is airbag tools. Now, this is not so much on today's generation Volkswagens. This was really a Mark IV and B5, B5.5 Torag as well issue. And that was removing the airbags. We used to take airbags off a lot. I feel like a lot more than we have lately. And it was tricky because there was a lot of spring tension on the steering wheel that held the airbag in place. So the Volkswagen special tool looked similar to this. It was a screwdriver kind of that was bent and then had a slightly altered tip on it. And what you would do if you're sitting in the vehicle, you would turn the steering wheel, you would reach to the front of it and then press the spring down and that would release the spring and then you could take the airbag out. Well, just like the other sockets, it was a tool that was forever either broken or missing. So what I did was just like on my power probe tip, I heated up a screwdriver and I just put a small bend in it. And that way I could alter the tip as I needed, didn't have to worry about finding the special tool, I just had it in my toolbox. It ended up, I went through two or three of these, maybe four of these over the years, because the tips would break and you'd grind it down and eventually it would just get too short and you wouldn't have enough room, it would hit the steering wheel so you wouldn't have enough room to release the tension on the spring on the airbag. Now this one was a Golf Beetle Jetta Passat screwdriver, but I also found that it was difficult to do the Torags. There was a couple other tricks to getting Torag airbags out. The spring tension on the Torag was even more. So what I did was I took an even bigger screwdriver and bent it just like I did on that small one. And this one I only used for Torags. You know, it was is obviously a much bigger screwdriver and did an incredible job of releasing the spring on the steering wheel. There was a different trick on the Torags of that generation. If you took the steering column trim off, you could actually get to the bottom of it a little bit easier and have plenty of leverage to get it. But this, this came before I figured that out. So, uh, you know, great little tool. I'm sure I'll find a use for it one day, but until then, both of them sit in my toolbox just like that. One of the other really common tools that we end up making is wire pin tools. And this is a wire pin tool that actually one of the other guys in the shop made, but I had it in my toolbox for some reason. And what he did was he took a piece of the metal support from a wiper blade, bent it in half, and then ground it down so that it would fit inside of a connector. And what that looks like is something like this. And what that does is that releases the tabs on the wire and then you can just pull the wire right out. And this is, you know, these special tools from Volkswagen are like 50 bucks a piece just for one of these type connector release tools. And this was free other than about 10 minutes worth of work. I think it took them a little bit to make sure that this, this distance was accurate. But uh, this one in some cases actually works quite a bit better than the factory tool. And you know, we, you would be upset if you lost this but not mad. I'd be really pissed if I lost or broke the factory tools that I have. Back to the screwdriver, but in the electrical world is this screwdriver that I ground down. Uh, this is just a plain old pocket screwdriver. The pocket clip broke off, so I decided to customize this one. And this one was great for something very similar to releasing connector tabs. This I custom made when the Mark VI came out, Mark VI Jetta. There was a recall very early on. In fact, I remember doing several lot cars to replace some wiring for the fuse panel and the relay panel. It had something to do with a horn or something like that. I don't really remember. But anyway, I ground it down real small so that I could fit it perfectly and then rotate and it would release a tab of some sort and, uh, and help me do a job that paid like 1.2 quite a bit faster. Another one of those tools that I probably won't use all that often anymore, but at the time it saved me a bunch of time. Some tool modifications are even simpler than cutting down sockets and bending, you know, giant screwdrivers like this. And that is on my snap-on extension here. This is actually a locking extension, so you put a socket on it, the tab slides up and down, and it locks the socket on. But one of the issues is there's a roll pin inside of here that would typically come out. Actually, you can see this one's coming out just a little bit here. And I got tired of having to bang the roll pin back in. I tried to flare the roll pin, that didn't help at all. So what I did was I just took some electrical tape, went around it a few times, and it holds it almost all the time. Now, at some point you're gonna have to retape this. I'm kind of at that point with this one right now. I don't use these a ton anymore, so it's not something I'm terribly concerned of, but you know, a quick two, three, four, five, six runs around it with some electrical tape 
and it holds that roll pin in for quite a while, even when you're using an impact gun. Also, another kind of quick tool similar to that is a bit that I cut down and taped into a quarter inch drive as well as quarter inch socket. And what this was for, this was because I needed to change the depth of a T20 bit in order to fit it on a wrench. So you have a wrench, you know, it's, it's that wide, put it on. Now you got a T20 that was longer than most of the T20 sockets that I had, but a little bit shorter than just the bit. And this I used all the time back when we were putting B5 ABS modules in Passat's because it was the perfect length and I had enough leverage to crack the bolts loose and then spin them out very, very easily. One of my final favorite things to make for doing work on cars is jumper wires. You know, you can buy these alligator clips here for next to nothing at places like Amazon or Harbor Freight or Northern Tool. They're stupid, stupid cheap. Also the same thing with shrink wrap. You know, it, it's crazy cheap how that stuff is. You can use either bulk wire, you can use wire out of an old wiring harness, whatever you want in order to make a bunch of jumper wires for next to nothing. I'll throw a link down where you guys can get all of these things to make your own jumper wires. Cause honestly, I think it's fun making my own jumper wires. Two, you can never have enough jumper wire laying around, especially this is nice because you can make different gauges. So you make a you know short, long, thin, wide, whatever you need, different alligator clip ends, anything you need, you can make your own and they last as long as you know the ones you would buy at the store. And you can make them in whatever size you want with whatever size clips. All right, so question of the day. What is your favorite tool that you've either modified or made on your own? All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. No beverage of the day.